Hi everyone, we did our Search for Solutions project on Space Sunshade. My name is Marissa Teddy and with me today I have Stacy and Ronnie. What is Space Sunshade? Space Sunshade is a geoengineering solution to global warming by blocking the sunlight that reaches Earth. There are three proposed designs for space sunshade. One is a thin screen that reflects sunlight instead of absorbing it. The second is by using electron magnetic acceleration to exceed gravitational acceleration. The third is a cloud or flyer that has an ideal minimum area of 6 million kilometers squared and is at a predicted cost of $1 trillion. Today, we will mainly be focusing on design option one and most of our research is on design option one. Space sunshade uses transparent material to reflect the sunlight instead of absorbing it. It is placed at the inner Lagrange point known as L1, which is located in between the Earth and the sun. The goal is to reduce radiation pressure and decrease the solar flux by 1.8%. Space sunshade has the potential to reduce temperature increases caused by greenhouse gas emissions. The goal here is to reduce or, di or divert solar radiation before it reaches the Earth. This can be done using reflective surfaces or a cloud, as mentioned earlier. Solar radiation management is a process that can reduce radiation much faster than the process of removing CO2. Reduction of solar insulation is more likely to occur at L1, which is why the sunshade is positioned there. This 1.7% decrease in solar insulation would decrease the global surface temperature and produce outstanding impacts on our climate change journey. Here is another image describing, describing the positioning of the sunshade and how it would cast shade on Earth if placed at L1. So what are the benefits? Some of the benefits would be that it would lower the solar irritants on our world, as well as temperatures could be controlled, uh, even with the current elevated gas concentration. This could also act like a conventional household or satellite solar panel, which would convert the radiation into electricity. If you wanted to completely counteract the cumulative effects of the human-caused global warming today, we would need to block approximately 2% of the sun's light. And the solar energy collected from the Dyson knot or similar products uh, transmitted to Earth through space uh, would supply 10,000 gigawatts per year of electricity, which would completely cover the Earth's entire electric power demand. Some of its efficiencies. If we wanted to completely counteract the cumulative effects, again, we would need to block out 2% of sun's light which would normally arrive to Earth, and this would uh, help with that. The reduction would bring down Earth's average global temperature by as much as 2.7 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, and this is approximately the same amount of change brought about by the Little Ice Age. And what are some criticisms? The logistics, obviously. Although there are technology and resources available to construct something this big, to block out the sunshade, the idea is relatively new and the concept has not, been, has not been fully grasped yet to be able to solve. Scientists also believe that it would be difficult to create sun, a sunshade contraption um, as it would have to be made in space and the materials and resources would have to be brought up there instead of being built here first. It's also very difficult to send these large quantities of mass into space. And then the last criticism was obviously that of money, which it would be worth trillions of dollars to send these sort of arrays into space. And there are reasons uh, to hope that reusable launch technology becomes more reliable. Uh, this might decrease the launch costs by under a trillion, but this still includes those many trillions of dollars, which it would cost to be able to create such a product. There are several limitations to implementing solar sunshade. The first one is the cost to get the structure into space. Launching traditional chemical rockets into space would cost roughly $40 billion. Possible cheaper methods of transport have been proposed that would make the project more feasible, but we still need to figure out the logistics of them. Another setback is that it would take some time to get, in, to get into effect. According to the National Space Society, we would need to manufacture thousands of tons of glass in titanium or aluminum to finish manufacturing the structure in 30 years. 
Finally, the last major issue is that it's not a permanent solution. It may only last around 50 years and would need maintenance in that time, adding to the cost. Um, to have a meaningful substantial impact on global warming, the apparatus would have, to be, would have to have a very large surface area. There are two main proposed methods of accomplishing this. One method involves using 16 trillions of small circular structures about a foot in diameter to cover an area of four and a half million square kilometers. With a mass of 20 million tons, using the usual chemical rocket launch method of transport would be costly at around $10,000 per pound. Alternatively, using electromagnetic space departures could be more affordable at $20 per pound. The second method would utilize glass lenses. Since they work more efficiently, only 1 million square kilometers would need to be covered with an estimated cost of $5 to $10 trillion in total. Um, how mature is the technology? The glass circular disks needed to implement solar sunshade are easily produced and are already commercially available. However, machines needed to produce the high volume of materials needed would need to be manufactured. The technology is not yet deployed and would take years to set up. The concepts of blurring the light rays has been known for many years. How the materials would function to reduce global warming are theor theoretical. Um, and this image shows how the schematics of the glass disc would theoretically work. And here are our references. 